Hello, Earth Signs. Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. I am not going to cover all the cards that we're using because I will be posting all of those below. So if you are interested in the cards, you can go on ahead and just look at the information box below and that will let you know what cards we have used. Now, I have prayed over, shuffled, and prepared a number of decks for possible clarifiers as we work our way through this. So I am going to be listing those. Any clarifiers that I use in any of the readings, I will list those for everyone below. So you may find that there's some clarifiers listed that were not used in your reading, and that's okay, because I won't... Uh, I won't recall who had what, so, but I will list them all beneath. When I prepared, I prayed over the card, shuffled, I asked that each of you receives at least one message. Hopefully you should receive more than that. If, however, nothing is resonating, that's okay. You can take that as a good sign. It can mean that you're in an all right spot. And the other thing that you could do is you could listen to your, your moon or your rising sign. That might give you some information. And if you still don't get anything in that, well, then that's, that's good. That means you don't have a, a lot of work to do this month. And I would take that as a plus. Okay. Now, we're not going to have enough room but don't worry as I go over each of your signs I will pick up these cards I am going to be pulling angel answer card deck from Dor an angel answer card from Doreen Virtues deck for each of your signs so we will work through those as we make our way through each of your signs one, one second Allie's getting up here okay she always likes to join us for the readings okay now, let me make sure you guys can see those. Okay, good. Okay, so what we have is we have each of your signs. The first card that we have for all of them is your situation. Then we have what's happened in the past. For most, it's typically within the past six months. What is challenging you and or what is blocking you? What is unknown to you at this time? And then what they're recommending that you do now. We're gonna start with the top. We're gonna to work our way down. The top up here is a Taurus. And then we're gonna do Virgo and the Capricorn. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. So Taurus, there is a situation you trying to get and needing some information on. So you have a major arcana. This is 19. It's the magnifying lens in this deck. Now in traditional tarot, this would be the sun card. And Holmes, he was always known, I mean, he would really dig in and get the details of everything. He always carried this magnifying glass with him so he could really look at the, the minute de details of stuff. He would be able to, you know, really focus and examine like footprints or some fingerprints or, or maybe some really tiny details in someone's writing penmanship of a letter. But he was able to do that because he had this magnifying lens. And you know, the sun, just like the magnifying lens, is all about illuminating things, giving us information, giving us clarity, enlightenment, helping us truly see things. This card is also about, you know, health, looking at and discovering and unveiling any dark, hidden things. And by, you know, getting some illumination, it, it dispels our fears. It removes our worries and our doubts. But there is something that, that you need information on. Now, some of you, it's actually, it's affecting your health. But there's something that you, you're not aware of yet. If I can get my bracelet to stop hitting my bug bites. I was attacked by a mosquito. <laughs> okay, there we go. So in your past, you have Love Begins. And this is a beautiful card. You see these two hands are coming together. They're pouring this water out. This would be, you know, this is essentially 
your Ace of Cups, New Beginning, you see that this cup is it's overflowing. This is all about having tremendous joy, our life overflowing with joy and happiness and abundance. It's about a new opportunity in love. It can also be a new opportunity in something that brings us joy. So it could be a new adventure, a new career, a new goal, but something that is very emotionally rewarding, emotionally fulfilling. But this also speaks about that, you know, once we have healed the past, and that's, that's healed, it's forgiven, then we can move forward into a new beginning. So for some of you in the past, you, you started, you had a new beginning in love. Some of you, you actually moved, you've got these two trees. So some of you, you actually uprooted, you, you physically moved to be closer to this person, to begin to build a foundation, to build a, a family tree, build a life together, to establish roots with this person. And mm, there's something going on fi financially with it. Because now some of you, you're like feeling trapped and stuck. Some of you, you're feeling as though you have been used for money. So for some of you, you have more money than your partner. You see this guy like leaning over his shoulder. Almost makes me think, uh, they're saying cook the books. Cook to the books. It's like, you know, your, your accountants, our, our accountants always do, they take care of our money. They take care of our investments. But if they're lying and they're stealing from us, that would be cooking the books falsifying records in order to to rob us to steal from us to take from us you have this illuminated uh circle in the back so for some of you it is coins it is money so some of you you feel like okay i started this new beginning with this person and you do feel as though you're some of you feel as though you've been used for finances for their monetary gain you feel you like you're paying for everything that you're having to pick up the load and for those of you it's like you're seeing the truth some of you are not necessarily wanting to because you know when we have this a new potential love and we just really have these these hopes and dreams and we really want it to work out we can overlook some red flags and we do it because we just we just hope that okay just turn it around just fix this maybe maybe it's not really that bad maybe it can be fixed so these two cards are your challenge cards and in the first one that you have this is the knave of swords and this is all about you know cutting through the bs cutting through things getting the truth there is nothing in this situation that you can't see that you can't be aware of But they're saying some of you aren't wanting to see it because, and again, this is your challenge. The challenge is seeing the truth, facing the truth, cutting through things that are not necessarily being shown. Like you, so sometimes, you know, we can kind of take, for example, that, you know, a relationship where, you know, someone thinks that their, their spouse or their partner is cheating on them, you know, there's always this intuitive knowing for many of you you know you're you're female and ladies we have spidey senses when it comes to that stuff and and you know you they can sense that okay something's not right something's going on here but you know when we really want to work things out and we really don't want to believe that our partner would do that to us we turn a blind eye we turn turn our back to the truth because we're like no i don't i don't want to lose this 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 relationship, this marriage, this, I've worked so hard for this. I've, I've established this foundation. So we will just kind of over, overlook that and turn our back to it and not really want to, wanting to see things for what they are. And that's, a, that is something that is a challenge for some of you because it is a time for you to, to see the truth, to get that clarity because the clarity is going to help you make the right decision for yourself. Now, the other card that you have is the Four of Swords, and you see that she's just stretched out, she's laying here. This is all about taking the time to rest and heal yourself, heal your heart, heal your soul, so that you can move forward. Some of you have felt 
So you have this, this love, this new love opportunity. You just felt like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm home. I feel like this is, this is my clan. This is my group. This is where I belong. But now, see, this is almost kind of looks like a prison, a jail. Some of you are starting to feel like trapped, imprisoned. You're feeling really stuck and you're like, okay, I don't, I don't know what to do. So for maybe some of you, you, you moved to, to a new state or some you could have even moved to like a whole new country. And now you're like, oh gosh, what do I do now? How do I fix this now? And some of you, you know, he's gobbled up or she's gobbled up all your funds and you're like, okay, well, now how am I going to move back? And that's, that's what's challenging you at this time. So if you can take the time to rest, you can take the time to regroup, you'll be able to not only see the truth, but you're also going to be able to see the way to escape from this prison, escape from feeling stuck. Now, what is unknown at this time? You have the world. And it is 21 and at the bottom it says a brilliant success the freedom to go in any direction a journey that is now complete and this really is all about you know taking about congratulations of the work that you've done be proud of yourself be proud of the progress you've made recognize your success being able to move forward with joy this is all about endings completions it's the last major arcana but in order to begin a new cycle a new phase we have to end a cycle, finish a phase, have a completion. They're saying for some of you, you don't, don't give up. Some of you are feeling very weighed down. You see, you got all these little fairies around there, like working out. Everything's going to work out it is this is going to come to a completion a culmination in your favor for the for those of you that that this is money money related maybe it's somebody that embezzled or or stole money or you just were throwing everything into the relationship because you're like, oh, whining and dining and just, you know, new relationships, just giving it your all. Don't worry, they're, they're going to help you financially. Like her wings are golden there. So they're saying that even if you have to leave this and you leave it with only $30 in your pocket, completing that cycle, you will have a new, a new cycle. You will receive financial rewards benefits. You are going to bounce back very quickly don't allow the fear of the finances to keep you stuck in a situation that's not working for you now they keep saying 126 let's see here if I can reach my book okay so for those of you that see numbers a lot the angels like to talk to us with numbers sometimes I believe some of you keep seeing and some of you are not noticing it but you keep seeing the number 126 they're saying so say you're sitting at a stoplight and you look up and, and the three cars around you all on their license plate have the number 126. That's because there's a message with that number that the angels are trying to tell you something. Now you can buy, like I have Doreen Virtue's Angel Numbers book that I reference, but Google has a lot of meanings for the numbers. All you do is angel message 126 and, and that would tell you what it is. But they are trying to give you messages with numbers. They have been showing you this number 126 a lot. And it is to give you some encouragement. Now, in the book it says, the more you stay positive and filled with faith, the better the outcome of your current situation. You're steering the ship with your thoughts, so keep them uplifted. So things are going to turn out beautifully. They are going to, there is gonna be a completion, but that completion is going to move you forward in a new beginning. It's also going to transform your life for the better. She has these big, beautiful golden wings. And, and when we're looking at her chakras, you know, when you're down in that, that yellow, that golden, that, that's your willpower, your energy, your life force, your ability to create the life that you desire. So this culmination 
is the part that's almost kind of like a caterpillar when they burst out of the cocoon as a butterfly. It's like they release that old casing, that, that cocoon that they were in. They just let that go and let that deteriorate on the ground because they burst out as this big, beautiful butterfly. What you're not aware of is you're about to burst out of this and things are gonna be so much better. You just have to trust and have faith. Now, for some of you, your recommendation cards, the first one that you have is laugh because this has been a very heavy, very, very heavy and stressful situation for you. So in order to try and help lift your spirits, the, the best and fastest way to do that is to do something that makes you laugh. Because laughter, it does, it raises our vibration, it makes us happy, it lifts our spirits, it, it gives us some hope and some renewal. We don't feel like we're just constantly in the dumps, like, oh my gosh, could it get any worse? What else, what else am I going to find out? What other trickery? What other cooking the books? So for some, it could be embezzlement. Maybe, maybe it was a, a business you start with someone. You find out your partner's been embezzling, stealing money. But you're like, dang. I, I, don't, I don't know if I can keep going. That's why they're saying, don't give up. It's okay. Don't give up. You are going to come out on the other side, glowing and sparkling with two magical wands in each hand. But to get there, do something that makes you laugh. You can watch a, you know, sitcom that's uplifting, funny, a comedy. I know a lot of the shows on TV now are very dark and heavy. Don't watch those. You know, go rent a movie. Go to the movies. Go watch a funny movie. Go watch a comedian or listen to a comedian or sing and dance to some goofy song or make silly faces at kids in cars next to you because they'll start <laughs> kids are funny they'll start making faces back at you and before you know it you're cracking up and laughing but do something to laugh it's going to lift some of this weight off of you and it's the key if you can see there's this uh there's this pyramid down here so the key to helping you because when we're really low, it's really hard for us to be like, okay, Nicole, I'm, I'm, I'm thousands of dollars in debt. I've, I've found out that I've had all this money stolen. I've been, I've relocated. I've completely uprooted my life. I've started this new beginning. I feel that this is a total failure and you want me to laugh. I get it. I know I've been through some very big, heavy things too. And when we're at rock bottom, we just feel like there is no effing way I can laugh. Are you kidding me? But you can and start out small because that is the key to lifting your vibration and giving you hope and know that it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay because it is. It is going to be okay. It's interesting when they, when they teach quantum touch, which is the uh, energy healing modality that I practice actually recognized by the medical community but when they teach it the, the very first uh, building block foundation that they teach is that you must get yourself to a state of joy a state of bliss a state of unconditional love so you have to think happy thoughts what makes you happy what makes you joyful what brings you to a state of love loving life because if you're not in that state of joy and bliss and happiness you're not going to be effective you can probably still get a little little bit done. You might be able to line some skeletal structures, but that's really, really it because it's all working from unconditional love, happiness. When we are going through challenges in life, it's not easy. But even like when they teach this, they teach to start visualizing. Visualize a memory, something that made you really happy. For you guys, start small. Listen to a comedian for 30 minutes. Watch a show that makes you laugh. It's also going to take your mind off of this. And when we lift that weight off of our shoulders, it also kind of helps us think outside of the box to think of some solutions. Okay, this is where I'm at. I now see it clearly, I get it. Now I need to get my mind to stop whirling in circles to calm it down a little bit so I can think of, okay, well, what's, my ne what's my next step? And they're going to be helping you with that because the other card you have is the Six Chakra Archangel Metatron. And this is really all clarity of thought. You see the third eye is illuminated. 
So your divine team, your angels, your guides, they are going to be giving you some insights, some clarity. They're going to be giving you some new steps, some action steps to take in order to move forward, in order to finish this cycle and begin anew. So pay attention to those signs. If you're getting the signs and you're like, okay, you keep having these thoughts pop in your head, especially when dealing with big, heavy stuff like this, you know, you don't want to jump and have a knee jerk reaction. So say you're sitting there and you all of a sudden have this thought of, okay, I'm going to back up and I'm going to move cross country. Well, you want to sit and meditate on that. It's a, that's a big decision. So when you have these ahas, these epiphanies, these thoughts that pop into your mind, take time to pray about it. Take time to meditate on it. Ask that they, ask the angels give you more clarifying signs. Like if you're in your car and driving, you're like, okay, so I think you're telling me to move to Texas. If that's true and you do want me to move to Texas, please give me an obnoxious, loud, clear physical sign. You might have a bird swoop down almost hit your car. You might see a box truck drive by with the big old Texas on the side. But do that for a number of days. And if you see that, okay, they're clarifying repeatedly, okay, I've been praying a lot, I've been asking for signs a lot, they are bombarding me with signs, okay, now I'm gonna take my next step. They're going to help you with that. Trust them, allow them to help you. Okay, think of a question. Taurus, if there's something that wasn't answered, you've got one more question. You have... They're saying some of you are fearful about making these changes. Allow them to help you to do that. Because for some of you, you have. You've uprooted your family. You've uprooted yourself. And let me find my book while we're chatting. Okay. But you have. You've completely changed your life. And we all want love. I mean, humans, we, we are intended to share our life with someone. We're intended to be in a partnership but it is heartbreaking and it is difficult when we have made many changes and sacrificed tremendously to not have it work out. The girl that you have, is there something better? Heaven has something wonderful in mind for you. However, it's not the same thing you have planned. Ask yourself what you would rather have, the very thing you're asking for or something that would make you much happier and more fulfilled. Sometimes God has joys in store for us that we could never imagine on our own. Open your mind and heart to the possibility that you deserve even more than what you're asking for. Trust your angels to guide you in new and exciting directions. Okay, so hopefully that helps you, Taurus. So we are going to move on with Virgo. Let's see what we have going on for you. I'm gonna move these. Okay, and so for those of you that are wondering about the pause, I was starting to look at the next cards for Virgo to see what's going on with you. Okay. Because you know, sometimes I need to figure it out. <laughs> I have to ask them, what world is going on? What are you trying to say? I don't get it. Okay. So we are starting out your situation, Virgo. You have the Nine of Observation, which is the Nine of Swords. You see, you've got, he's flat on the ground. So Holmes, he was, he was very physically inept. He did martial arts. He could really protect himself, defend himself. He wasn't fearful of others, but there was a time that he was just beaten to a pulp. And it got into the newspapers that he was nearly killed. He was nearly beaten to death. And his partner Watson was totally freaked out and worried and he was reading the papers. But then when he rushes to their office, he finds that Holmes is there and he's perfectly fine. And that uh, Sherlock Holmes had allowed it to be exaggerated. So you're going through a situation right now where things aren't as bad as they seem. So you're having a lot of nightmares, a lot of doubt, a lot of fear. You're facing a lot of despair. Some of you are, are even kind of depressed. 
Some of you feel as though you have just, you know, hit rock bottom. So for some of you, you are in a, a divine, divine relationship. You could be a twin flame, you could be a twin soul, or you could have met someone that's a, a strong soulmate. You're not with the person. Some of you feel as though you're just in a state of despair because you haven't, do you see he's got this letter, but this letter hasn't been received. It's not opened. It's, it's communications that he has not shared. So for many of you, you've been waiting on communications to come in from your love interest. For some of you, your twin. For some of you, your soulmate. There haven't been communications, but you've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And you're really beginning to doubt the entire thing. You're beginning to doubt yourself. You know, when we have worries and fret and we're fretting all the time, we can create, you know, create some more, you know, challenges for ourselves. It's all about a, a vibrational, a vibrational thing. That's why they say when it's law of attraction. Hold on one second, I'm gonna get a drink. With law of attraction, you know, if somebody is wanting to get, say, a new car, <laughs> you have a car on this card. Say somebody's wanting to get a new car. They're doubting, they're freaking out, and they're so worried because their money's tight and their car's having one problem after another problem after another problem. They're like, oh my gosh, it's gonna die on me on my way to work one day. It's just not gonna work. It's just gonna, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna fail me. And then they, they get up to go to work one day and, and okay, it's, it's working, but there's a flat tire. And then they get the flat tire fixed. And then a week later, they go to get in and, oh, okay, it's barely working, but it's making really loud noise, and now the blinkers aren't working. And, and then they get there again, and okay, it's, you know, it's making loud noises when they break, and then they go and they find they need, like, new rotors. But it's, it's one thing after another. Whereas by shifting, shifting vibration, shifting from that place of, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's gonna break down. I don't have money. Shifting to a state of, okay, I'm I'm going to get a new car. I'm gonna get a new car, and they envision the new car, and they envision themselves behind the wheel of that new car, and how happy it makes them, and how joyful they are at at knowing that they can just get behind the wheel and and turn it on, and they have no worries. They can get to work and get to dinner and get to all their destinations without any fears or worries. And they're at a place of trusting. They already are having that feeling of, okay, I've got this car, I've got this. And then before long, they have the money, money comes in, they get a new car. And in the meantime, their old beater just continues to hang in until they, they have the financial abundance to do that. It's a vibrational thing. But for many of you, you have been putting in a lot of work and you are being congratulated on that because you have been doing a lot to heal yourself, to prepare yourself, to uh, get ready to move forward. Many of you have been doing healings and spiritual work. You've been working on getting on alignment with your mission. And you really have, you've done a lot. And you should pat yourself on the back because you have done a, done a very good job. Now, there's a little bit of work that still needs to be done. This is your past card. And the past that you have is the one, and on the bottom it's you know, passion ignited. This would be one of wands in traditional throw. But this is really about letting our soul soar. It's new beginnings, new adventures, you know, things that bring us joy and bliss, new ideas. It can be personal life, it can be business life, but it's you know, having a renewed spirit feeling excited, feeling joyful, feeling as though we are on our life path, we are doing our purpose, we are doing our mission, we are ignited, we are alive, we are excited. And for many of you, that's where you have been. You've been doing your work, you've been putting the work in, you've been working on healing. Many of you have been working on healing your heart.
Now they're saying for some of you there is still some heart healing that has to be done. For some of you it's tied to your mother, they're saying. And that's not to say that it's huge, because those of you that have been doing work, you're like, oh my gosh, something else? Are you kidding me? But you know those letters that I was talking about a, a week ago? You know, sometimes we can, we can sit there and we can logically think, okay, logically, I understand. So for those of you that this is uh, mother healing, logically, I understand. My, my mom did the best she could in her condition in her situation she did the best she could with what she had and it was just what it was and I accept that and I forgive her and I love her and I forgive and forget but until we have they're saying connected the dots because for some of you, yes, you've been able to release, do a lot of healing. Yes, you can logically think about it and explain it and not be bothered by it. Because you have done a lot of healing on your heart. But there are still some dots that have not been connected. That, the, that how your childhood, the relationship with your mother, how that has affected you now as an adult. And for many of you, how that is blocking you from opening up to this divine love. Because you're just waiting, you're waiting for some news to come in from your love bug, and you're like, what in the world? So as far as connecting dots, so say you, you sit down and, and you do one of these letters, and you write a letter about your mom, your relationship with her, things that, you know, everything, good, bad, ugly, usually you'll find that there's a lot of bad. But then you also write about what you thought about her relationship with your father, and what you thought about her relationship with other men. And then you, you know, wrap it up with the statement that I had about forgiving them and all that stuff. But what you'll find when you write that, and you're looking at that, you might find, okay, my mom really wasn't that faithful. And, you know, my mom was quick to anger. My mom was really quick and angry with me. My mom was angry with her lovers when she was leaving them. There, you know, maybe there was a lot of drama. And maybe, you know, maybe your mom was very critical of your dad, very judgmental of your dad. And so what that has done subconsciously, that makes you think that, okay, love involves infidelity. There's cheating. And love, partners can never be right. Everyone's going to mess up. Everyone's going to let you down. And people can't be counted on. And you don't realize it, but subconsciously that's why, okay, you've got this love of a lifetime, but that's why you're pushing, pushing it away. Because subconsciously at a deeper level, that's essentially like this program that keeps playing over and over. So to finally cancel the program by writing this letter and doing that, it's, it's very symbolic. And I'd explain the steps of, you know, the ripping it, the burning it, what those different steps do. Essentially what it's doing is cutting those cords completely transmuting and removing that program that's been playing over and over and over for you. Because when you've done the deep healing and stuff, it, you're finally then just at the point that the program needs to be removed. You gotta reset. You gotta reset, wipe the canvas clean. And it won't be that hard. Now, as far as what's your challenge, you do have a major arcana, this is the chariot. And this is about with this deck, it's about not forgetting our emotions, not giving up on love, not giving up on affection. Because if you don't give up, you will have success. So for many of you, what your challenge is, is you are starting to give up on love, you're starting to give up, you're starting to lose your hope, you're starting to lose your faith that this is going to happen. Some of you are beginning to even question, oh my gosh, is there something wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with you. You're magnificent. You're beautiful. You're amazing. You're the bomb. I mean, look at that. Sexy, confident, ready to share herself with someone. And not just share sexually. 
you know, when people are naked in cards, it's representative of truly opening up and burying ourselves, our deepest fears, our hopes, our dreams. Really ready to fully be connected and intimate with someone. But what's challenging is you've been ready for that. You've wanted that. You've put in a lot of work and you're like, damn, why is this not happening? And you're starting to give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. You haven't failed. You have not messed anything up. There's just some minor tweaks. That's all. And they're saying for some of you, the, these minor tweaks, these final heart healing, final releasing things, that's going to clear up this energy between you and your, your divine. So for many of you, it's the divine masculine. Don't get stuck to this. I know they're same sex. I know that there could be the opposite sex. Could be a man. You could be talking about your lady love. But for many of you, this is divine masculine. Don't give up. But there is a different method of doing this final release, this final healing, this final preparation for you. And it's great. You know, we all learn new things all the time. You know, we all do. Even I'm in the trenches with you. I, I am just like you where, you know, years of healing, years of work. And then all of a sudden, oh, I've got to write letters. Okay. I'll do that. There were a couple other little, and again, in the scheme of things, with the work that we've been doing, especially as twins, I mean, we have been putting in the work. Ladies, we feel like, dang, I'm just worn. I need like a six month vacation. I've been working so hard. And then to realize, oh, that's, that's it? Really? It's kind of anticlimactic, but that little thing energetically could be your block. And don't think like, it, sometimes people want to beat themselves up. Like, oh my gosh, if I would've known that six months ago. You will find out what this final piece is. And for many of you, that's why it's coming up in this reading because it is time. Before it was not time for you. Because you have to remember with, with these high, vibration, divine loves, twin flame, twin souls, and soul, soulmates, divine timing is imperative. They're not just preparing you, they're preparing him. And they're preparing a whole lot of other players in it as well. And by players, I don't mean, hey, player, player, got all the ladies, all the men. No, I'm just talking about, could be family, could be friends, could be places of employment, business partners. There is a lot at play, particularly with twins. There's a lot that needs to be divinely orchestrated. So it was not time for you to have these little details yet. But now it is. The time's come now. What you have as far as what is unknown to you is the moon. And at the bottom it says powerful intuitive epiphanies, letting go of worry and fear, understanding the truth of a situation. And this is really listening to our intuition because we're receiving intuitive information. It's giving us the next steps. The moon is all about things that we're not aware of that are kind of hidden. Because you look, if you can look closely, she's playing one instrument. But if you look in the reflection of the water, it's a totally different instrument. So for some of you, you, you think that things are at one point, but they're not. There's some information you haven't been aware of yet because it, again, it was not time. This isn't something to beat yourselves up over. It just wasn't time. That's all. This is a divine timing thing. But what's unknown is you're now going to receive that information because you were thinking, oh man, I've got everything ready. I'm ready to play some music. but they're not gonna be giving you the steps and information that, okay, we're gonna swap out the instrument real quick. We're gonna make a couple little minor tweaks and adjustments. We're gonna give you a little bit of information and then you're gonna be ready to make some music. So listen to that intuitive information that's coming in because that's gonna be on what you need to do because again, it's these final steps, these final things that you need to clear. And it's not something to be super fearful. Actually, it's not anything to be fearful about anyhow. Don't be fearful. Don't worry. Don't think, oh my gosh, what if I mess up? What if I miss it? You won't miss it. You've got an entire divine team. They'll just keep turning the messages up louder and louder and louder. But that's part of why they don't want me doing weekly readings for anyone for the next two weeks. Because they want everyone to take the time to sit down and pray and meditate and ask for signs. 
If you spend a week and a half, two weeks solid, praying and meditating and asking for signs and writing down your epiphanies and writing down the thoughts that come up and asking for more clarification of them, you will find that it's very clear at the end of that week and a half, two weeks as to what you need to do. And then you do it. These are the two cards as far as what it is that you need to do. You need to clear the path. You need to clear the path so that he can come in. You need to clear the path so that he can bring these communications into you. For many of you, you know, this is like a love letter. He loves you. He cares about you. He wants to build a home with you. He wants to build a foundation with you. You're fearful that's not the case. In order for him to bring in those communications, bring in that new beginning, you have to clear the path. You have to get the junk all off the, the golden brick pathway for him. Declutter it. Because he's not going to be able to come in with all that in his way. This is about releasing old energy, releasing stagnated energy, letting go of our negative thoughts, letting go of our fears, our worries, our doubts, these nightmares that you guys are having, to let it go. Let it go. Release that. Come back into a state of faith, a state of optimism. For some of you, in order to clear this path, it is a, it's some healing work that needs to be done with regards to your mother. For others of you, it is some f family healing that needs to occur. So maybe, you know, you've done, you've removed all these blocks, you've got these things, but, but maybe you're still kind of isolated. Maybe, maybe you're still not, you know, spending time with your, your family, your brothers, your sisters, your mom or your dad. But if you're a twin, one of the things that you're here to do is you are here to heal your ancestral line. And until you're making a good chunk of, I mean, it doesn't have to be completely healed. But oftentimes for twins, until they've, they've done a, a bit of work on that, healing that ancestral line, it blocks the path for their twin to come in. So maybe it is a matter of writing letters to your parents, releasing that energy, letting that go, letting those child, childhood experiences go. But the interesting thing, the cool thing about the letters is that they will help you connect the dots as to, oh my gosh, it'll become so clear. Wow, that's why I've had these behaviors. That's why I, I pushed this away. And you don't even realize it. You're like, dang. For some of you, it's just also opening up that connection. I mean, because this is your family. I mean, and all families go through something. <laughs> there is no leave it to beaver perfect family out there. There's just not. There's not. We all have stuff in our closets. We all have things to heal and repair. But some of you, it's healing and repairing those things with your family members. Starting to talk to your brothers and sisters. Letting bygones be bygones. Letting things go. Letting the past go. For some of you, you do have some attachments. You know, letting go of negative. So if we have a lot of negative thoughts and fears and worries. It's interesting, I did a healing session for someone recently that had hurt her foot. And uh, when I was doing the healing session, I was given some images of where she was really worried and, um, and having a moment of fear about finances. And there was this uh, person who she shared a, p a past life with was who, who was a very dark, lower vibration soul. And in that past lifetime with her had, you know, really tortured and held money over and had her in a really bad situation that life because of money so here you know money was tied in this lifetime and she was crying and worrying and fretting over money it's interesting because there's this piggy bank so what happened is that that darker lower vibration soul used that as an opportunity to come in and attach to her you see these spirals and attach to her and then what it did was it it just caused her more problems in life and ultimately ended up pushing her and she ended up falling and and uh hurting hurting her foot and a lot of us can have things come through and attach to us and, and we don't even realize it. So some people, they don't realize it, you know, they call alcohol spirits, your strong liquor spirits. The reason is because when you drink, you lower your vibration. So it's interesting because growing up, my like parents wouldn't drink in a very strict religious home. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's nothing wrong with drinking, mom, Jesus drink wine. And that's true. Having a glass of wine's okay. <laughs> Having multiples where you lose your ability to function. Essentially what it does and the reason, now looking at it for what I've been told now, essentially the reason they don't want us drinking 
in excess, like again, you can have a glass of wine or whatever, but what it does is it lowers our vibration. It allows darker, lower level entities to come through and attach to us. Or if we're doing drugs, it does the same thing. Or if we're in a state of really low sadness. And sometimes we don't even realize it, that if we're in a state of fret and despair, and maybe we go into a big crowded event, maybe someone, or go into a hospital. If we're at a state where our vibration is lower and it is not at a high vibration of love and joy and gratitude, we go into a hospital, we give an opportunity for something of a lower vibration to attach to us. So for some of you, you need to remove those things that are attached. Sometimes it can even be negative thought patterns. But there's a little bit of work that still needs to be done to clear the path for him. So they're going to try and help you with that. They are going to help you with that. It's just listening to the intuitive information that's coming in because it's going to be a little different from, for all of you. And you are going to be successful. The other card, again, this is what you're supposed to do. Looking at it, victory doesn't really make sense. But what this is saying is this card's also about, you know, we can have external success. You know, we can get that dream job. We can get that dream car. But we can have internal success where we have done some deep, tremendous transformation and healing. We have changed ourselves internally. Preparing ourselves to move forward down our destined path. So they want you to know you are going to be successful. This is going to be a huge transformation for you, the final transformation. It's going to turn things into gold and glittery and help you open that path. So, there's saying for a lot of you, you really kind of already know the stuff that you need to do. Just ask for some confirmation. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pull an angel answer card. So we'll, Virgo, think of a question that you have. And you have, ask for help from others. So some of you are going at it alone some of you might need a little bit of help. You might need help with the healer. You might need help. Mm, Say so maybe like a reading or life coach or someone that can tap in and clearly tell you, okay, for your situation, here's what you need to do. Okay. Because for some, some of, okay, so they're giving an example. Because some of you are like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> so for some of you, this ancestral healing that you're supposed to do, so twins, twins, one of their, all twins, part of their mission is to heal their ancestral family line. Could be through letters, could be through reconnecting with your siblings, your parents. Sometimes there is this, and people like to call them curses and vexes. Don't call them curses and vexes. Essentially, it's this, this dark, lower vibrational entity pattern that has come down through your family. Maybe there's a, maybe there's alcoholism that runs rampant. Or maybe you notice that there's this mental health thing that comes down the family. Well, it's typically because of something that happened multiple lifetimes before. And this dark entity, this dark lower vibrational soul latched onto your family. Latched onto your family and it's been causing problems ever since then. So maybe you need to go see a healer who can get back to that source and be like, ah, this is where it all began. Can heal that, remove that, clear that, cancel it, cut all those cords, cancel those soul contracts, freeing you and your family from this. And voila, your family healing is accomplished. Okay. Oh, you've got to ask for help from others. Okay. And many of you are twins. You got your flame here, you've got your two here. It's just a little bit of work you have to do. It's not necessary to do everything on your own. Your angels are asking you to reach out to those around you for assistance. By allowing others to lend a hand, you greatly increase your chances for success and your plans will begin to move forward. The help you receive may also include important information provided by knowledgeable individuals. The stress of doing too much can create both physical and emotional health challenges for you. Now they were mentioning early for some of you, it's this worry and this fretting is causing health issues. Some of you, it's causing stomach issues. You're having stomach, stomach problems. Okay. 
Surround yourself with loving friends and family who are willing and able to lighten your load and you'll begin to feel much better. Okay, so hopefully that helps you, Virgo. And let's go ahead and see what's going on with Capricorns. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so starting out for your situation, you have the two of evidence, which would be the two of wands. And if you see here, Holmes, he's like looking into this you know, microscope. And he, and he was known, he would listen to his intuition, but he really relied heavily on his, his physical skills. And he was very good with chemistry. He loved chemistry. He liked to evaluate. He, he would be known to take ashes, like he's got this cigarette that's lit next to him. And he prided himself on being able to take the ashes from any type of cigarette or cigar. He would evaluate them and he would be able to tell you what brand it was. He also was able to do something similar with perfumes. But he did that by using his chemistry skills, but also he would have to listen a little bit to his intuition when doing that. And this is really all about new partnerships. So for some of you, you do have the opportunity for some new partnerships, new beginnings. This is about being able to achieve our goals by making good, solid decisions. Some of you, they're saying you are very dynamic. You are very driven. Or, you know, whatever you put your mind to, you can make it make it happen. But this is a time that you need to do that. You they have the ability to take risks, jump into something new. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that you do have this opportunity for a new partnership. For some of you, it, it's a new lover, a new romantic partner. For some of you, it could be a new business partner. Uh, they're saying that releasing the, the old. They're, they're pointing out these cobwebs in, in this card. Actually, there you go, there's no glare. Oh, there you go. So they're saying for some of you, you have this, this X of yours. You're not together and you're not communicating right now. But they have been your, your companion, your trusted companion, your loyal partner for, for years now. They're saying it, it hasn't gone well. For some of you, it's been kind of like a, a vicious cycle in this relationship. They're pointing out the circles in all these different areas. So for some of you, maybe it was you were married to each other at some point. You are financially intertwined. So even if you're not married, you're financially intertwined. Maybe you have properties, business, maybe an estate was left, but there, there's something tied to finances. But it has been a cycle, a cycle. You see, he's got this, this round ashtray down here. So for some of you, it's, it has ended. It's just like gone up in smoke. It ended. So they're saying, so for some these, you know, past recent ish past cards are six months. They're saying for some of you, this relationship went up in smoke and flames anywhere from eight to 12 eight to 11 months ago-ish, but it just went up in smoke. It was ugly, it was hurtful. The reason that happened was to propel both of you forward onto your destined paths. There really haven't been communication since then, but this is someone that you've had a history with. There was a lot of care that there was uh, You've been together, you had a very long history together. And for most of you, it was a romantic partnership. Now, as far as what is in the past, you have accelerated motion. This really is all about swift movement, swift motion. Things just moving forward rapidly. It's about hope and passion. And it can also be about delays. And, you know, taking the time to sit down and think, okay, was there 
anything else that I need to do because for some of you there's still a step there's still something that you haven't done to bring this to a culmination a completion of finally ending it ending this cycle this is also about you know a, a strong current like being pulled in the direction of our destiny and you see she's she's staring up at you know the stars you know we could think wishing upon a star so for many of you, you had tried to make this relationship work many times. You tried. You tried over and over and over. And every time, it was very difficult. It's always been a challenge. It's not worked out. Some of you, you live at a very a vast distance from each other. Maybe you've got a mountain range in between you, but you don't live near each other. But you've tried to make it work. Some of you have even tried repeatedly to maybe get to the same location residentially, but it seems like every time there's some hiccup, something that just stops it and delays it, that's because it's not meant to be. They're trying to get both of you onto a new path. They're trying to free you of this. You know, I'm saying this card can also be like passion. So for some of you, this was a passionate sexual relationship. That's really kind of all there was. Because it's, it's, it's run its course. It's served its purpose. You know, sometimes we'll have relationships that last a lifetime. Sometimes we have relationships that just last a season. And sometimes they just last, it's just a purpose. Like, it's served its purpose. You know, maybe sometimes we jump into relationships that are rebound relationships. And all that relationship's intended to do is just help us heal our hearts so we can move on to a deep love that will stand the test of time. That's the love of a lifetime. So maybe we have this love of a season to just heal ourselves, get ourselves all brushed up, boost our self-confidence and move forward. For many of you, this relationship that you had, because you're not in it, but it's not officially done. You haven't ended it, they're saying. You're holding on, they're still holding on. You're both just kind of still holding on when you both just need to let go. It was a lesson for both of you to help you both grow and evolve. So for some, it was, it was sexually based. For some, it's financially based. Now, as far as what's blocking you, what's challenging you, you have the wheel. And this is all about the divine helping you to renew your life, to change your life, to refresh your life. This is about karmic cycles, karmic endings, completions. And, but it's also about allowing those changes, allowing those completions, welcoming them. Because they're, they're trying to end this to bring in something new. It's kind of like cycles, this, this wheel. It's like, you know, what goes around comes around. Kind of like karma. And this is, a, this is the karma card. But karma is lessons life lessons this was a lesson this relationship it was to help you grow help you become better for many of you help you step into your own strength because some of you you really do have some worries about money how like oh my gosh if this is totally ended how am i going to be able to provide for myself but to get that capricorn you're you're very grounded you're very practical which is why many of you you're like dedicated to your careers you're focused on your careers because you're, work at, you're focused on your financial stability. And it's not a bad thing, but that's not a reason to stay in a relationship that's miserable for both parties, and you've not been happy. They're saying many of you, you don't even want the relationship, you just want the benefits that come with it. So for some of you, it's, it's the finances. For some of you, it's the sex. For some of you, it's almost as though like, uh, Yeah, sometimes people have open relationships to be able to say that, okay, I'm in a relationship, but it's an open relationship, and the person at a distance, then they can continue to do what, what they want, and their partner does what they want, and, but that gives them the cover, they have this relationship front. For some, although it could be, yeah, for, for some of you, it's just a couple of you, that's what it's been. It's convenient for you to be able to say, okay, well, I'm married, but then you just, you know, you can do whatever you want.
but it's time to move on. It's time for closure. It's time to complete the cycle because everything's cycle. You know, you, you even look at our seasons. We, we get to winter, everything's dead in the winter. But in the spring, everything comes back to life. They're trying to end this, conclude this, so that you can have a new beginning. And it is with someone new. But many of you, the reason that you're saying is you are fearful. You see how she's kind of got her, her hand over her eyes. You're fearful about the future. You're fearful about like, okay, if I finally make the decision, if I finally am like done, done with him, done with this relationship, because you wanna be done, you really don't want to be in, they're saying those of you in this situation, you don't want to be in the relationship. You've only met, for many of you, you've just been holding on because you're, you're concerned about finances. You're looking out to your future security. How am I gonna provide for myself? How am I gonna take care of myself? But you're gonna be fine. You are gonna be fine. They're trying to get you out of this, this loveless relationship where some of you, are, you feel shackled. You feel stuck because you don't want it. You don't want to be in it. So you don't have to be in it. You can let it go so they can make your dreams come true because your dreams are going to come true, just not with this person. They haven't given you a lot of intuitive information on that. They're trying to get you to listen to that. They're saying there's been a lot of aha uh -huh, epiphanies that have been coming in, but, but you're not wanting to, kind of like, uh, who was it up here, Taurus? We were talking about, you know, sometimes we just don't want to pay attention to those things, be it because some people they don't want to be alone. Some people terrified they're not gonna be able to make ends meet. But you know, we'll ignore those red flags. We'll ignore that. Okay, yeah, this is really a bad idea, but ooh, and we'll stick it out because uh, we think that we need it. We keep ourselves in prison. You don't have to keep yourselves imprisoned. They actually, they don't want you to be imprisoned because they, they are trying to bring you someone better something better now what's unknown to you you have another major arcana you have renewal now in the traditional tarot this would be judgment and at the bottom it says review the past and present so you can plan a bright new future understanding your life purpose releasing judgments of yourself and others Capricorn it really is a time for you to sit down and review this situation Really look at it, create a T-chart. What's worked, what's not worked. What you've liked, what you've not liked. Then put together a t -chart. Okay, what is this person doing for me? What are they not doing for me? Put a chart together, what you do want in a relationship, in a partnership. And if you've got a list of 40 things that you need, like, okay, here's my dream partnership. Here's my dream partner. And this guy, he only has one of those things, or he has none of them, or only a couple of them, it's time to let him go. But they're saying you already know that. But really, do review. They're also saying for many, because this is a karmic thing, what have you learned? What have you learned from this? And what's your next step? What do you want in your next partner? So that you can start to visualize that. They're also saying it's time to listen to the epiphanies because again, this is judgment. Sometimes this is, you know, listening to the call, you know, we'll be given a divine call and that's what many of you are being given. You're being divinely guided to change your path. This is not the path for you. This is not the person for you. They've been trying to give you a lot of signs and epiphanies, but you know, they can, they can try all day long, but at some point we have to answer that call. We have to listen. We have to make that change, allow that change. They need you to allow that change. Some of you also, it's, it's looking at things from a different angle, looking at things in a new light, because this is an important point in your lives. So what's unknown is that by making this decision, because for many of you, you know, you're still kind of holding on, they're kind of still holding on, it's stagnant, you're not really talking, but on both sides of the house, you're both waiting for a final decision to be made that, okay, nope, this is 100% this is completely done. For many of you Capricorn, he's waiting on you to make that decision. You see how you got this figure? He's sitting here, he's got this, this feather pen and he's got this scroll, he's, he's putting together a note.
Hmm. So some of you, this could be you, Capricorn. Others of you, it's it's him. But either way, you're, you're you're both lingering, you're both stuck because you're waiting on one of the two of you to make a decision, to make a choice, to finally make the final choice to move on and to move forward. So for some of you, what okay? So what they're saying, this is the unknown. What's unknown to you is that he is this month going to be making that decision. He's going to be communicating it to you. See, he's writing a letter. He's got this bird on his left hand. Birds are all about communications. Some of you, this was about sex. You've got this bunny here, so maybe the two of you were like rabbits. Um, but it's been in limbo. You've been at odds. You had things go up in smoke eight to 11, 12 months ago, but neither of you have done the final decision. You're about to receive information that he has finally made a decision because both of your lives have stagnated because of this. You see, you've got this whole team, you've got this butterfly, like your life's waiting to transform, his life's waiting to transform. This is, is it, it's like a faded, destined ending, completion, because you've learned a lot from it, Capricorn. You've grown, you've remembered you're magnificent. You've also remembered that you deserve a love that's requited, that you are both on the same page, that it's, not that it's, it's not they're saying not just superficial because sometimes you know we'll be in a relationship because of the way it looks but there's not a deep unconditional love they want to bring you unconditional love you want that allow them to bring you that but what's unknown is you're about to receive this communication from him because you see this 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 whole divine team you got the butterflies they're god the angels your entire divine team is waiting to transform your life completely bringing you new beginnings. They're saying both sides, both sides of the house, both coins. So for both of you, because for many of you, it's almost like you've been friends for a long time. Even though it has, they're saying for some of you, it has been very ugly in the recent past, but you have this long history together. Okay. They're saying don't don't block each other from the blessings that are coming in. You know, sometimes people will be in relationships and, and they're miserable and they don't really want them, but they sometimes don't want that other they don't want the other person, but they don't want the other person to be happy. So in blocking that person's happiness, they're also blocking their own happiness because maybe they just pop in every once in a while to keep themselves fresh on that person's mind because they're like, mm-mm, um, I'm not gonna let you move forward. But by doing so, they're not allowing themselves to move forward. And, and typically that's done because, you know, we haven't healed our hearts, we haven't let go. You know, maybe, maybe we've been really hurt, we felt betrayed, we felt deceived. And there are healthy ways to deal with those pains because we've all been through heartache. We've all had painful relationships and breakups. But there are ways that, that uh, benefit us. There are ways that benefit everybody. But this new beginning for both of you has been blocked. Hopefully it's not you, Capricorn. Hopefully it has been them trying to block your new beginning. But for some, it's you've been trying to block a new beginning for them. But again, they're saying both sides of the coin. It's you've both blocked each other. They're trying to bring you transformation. They're trying to bring you the love of a lifetime. They're trying to bring you new beginnings. In order to do that, there has to be a completion, a total 100% ending of this relationship, this partnership, this alliance, this connection that the two of you have. It's got to be done, kaput, finished. Set that thing ablaze and set both set yourself free. Judgment is decision. What's unknown? He is about to make his decision. You see, you've got this, this little like gnome and he's got this this trumpet 
finally, the two of you are going to be answering the call. You're going to be getting on the path in which you're destined to be on, which is separate from each other. But that's a beautiful thing. What's going to get you onto the divine destined path that you're both intended to be on, freeing you up, is the making this decision to finally end things and communicating that. You are going to be receiving, because many of you, you are at a distance, so many of you it's going to be a, a written communication. For some of you, it's also going to be a canceling a contract with each other. So, so maybe some of you were married and, and it's, you know, it's finally signing the divorce papers. Maybe for some of you had to blow up around a you know, year-ish ago and you've sent him divorce papers and you're like, gosh, is he ever going to sign the divorce papers? I've got this new love. I'm ready to move on with my new love. He's keeping me stuck. What in the hell is going on? Why won't he just sign the papers? He's about to sign the papers. Or maybe you have a business together and it's separating the business, separating the assets. Maybe you've got properties to sell. And again, you've just been waiting on him. Will he just make a freaking decision? Stop being wishy-washy. Stop keeping up me stuck. I'm ready to get on my path. I'm ready to have my dreams come true. I've been wishing upon a star. And maybe I know that it's not you and that's okay because it's best for both of us. Now just sign the papers so we can both get about our business and get on the destined path we are both to be on. He's about to sign it. You're about to get information. For many of you, you are receiving that information this month and it has been a long time coming. A long time coming, but it's about to happen. So for those of you who've been frustrated because things did stall out, gonna finally have a culmination and a completion. Now, for those of you that are still kind of worried and stressed out about money, <laughs> okay. So they just told me to, you know, all these cards have numbers. You got two, the eight, the 10, 20, 13, 34. So they're, they want me to add those up, which is 87, okay. And I'm going to read, you know, the angels like to communicate, us, communicate with us frequently through numbers. And you are very worried about money because again, many of you, the whole reason that you have not let go is because you're worried about your future. How am I gonna provide for myself? You're worried about finances. Angels will give us numbers. We might see the same number on multiple license plates. We might see a number on a commercial, we notice that it comes up all the time, we might have a number pop into our head. And that's because the angels are trying to tell us something. So if we look up the angel message, the angel meaning of that number, there's always there's always some meaning to it. So I have Doreen Virtue's book, which is Angel Numbers 101, and these total 87. Now when you read the meaning of 87, you're on the right track with respect to your career and finances, keep going. So it's okay to let go. You don't have anything to worry about financially, Capricorn. It's okay. Now, as far as what they're recommending that you do, the first card that you have is make a note of it. And this is about trusting our intuitive information, trusting those epiphanies, trusting those ahas. Sometimes we don't trust it. But you know, if, if you're having some trouble trusting your intuitive guidance that you're receiving, if you start writing that information down, like the thoughts that pop up, the epiphanies, the signs that you're getting, just, just start writing it down. Don't try to interpret it. Don't try to think, okay, what are they trying to do? Just start writing it all down. And if you do that for a week or so, you'll be able to make the connection. Like, oh my gosh, that's what they're telling me. Then you take action. You, because at some point, we have to take action. If we have our, our angels dragging us nonstop, trying to get us out of that cage, that corral that we have been stuck in, and they're trying to take us to a new beautiful river in the new plot of land, and they keep trying and trying and trying and trying. We have to participate. We have to take some action on it. We have to say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna start taking those steps. I'm gonna take those steps in your direction. I'm gonna answer the call to get on my divine path. I'm going to let this small plot that has kept me trapped really not that happy for, for new pastures. Where there's a little creek, there's more lush greenery to eat, it's going to be more fulfilling for me. 
It's going to make my dreams come true. But we have to take those steps. If we stubbornly refuse and they keep pulling, trying to drag us in that direction, they can try all day long. They know that, that things will be so much better over there. They know that's our destined path. They know that's what will make our dreams come true. They know that because they're seeing that at a 30,000 foot level. They know that this is not good. This is not good and it hasn't been for a very long time. It's not going to change. It's not going to get better. It's a lesson. It's time to move on. They're pulling your bit. They're trying to drag you to the new plot. They're trying to get you to greener pastures, but you have to take that step. You have to take the step, take the action. So pay attention to the signs that they're giving you and take the action steps. Now, the interesting thing is, you know how they were saying for some of you, it's, it's him making the decision because he's got his little pen scroll and he's, he's writing you. Some of you, it's a matter of you communicating and you making the decisions because see, there's this, this figure and that almost kind of like looks like a mailbox. Cause again, the two of you are not in the same residential location. You're a totally different stage. You could be on the other sides of the country. You might be in separate countries, but you are a distance from each other. But for some of you, it's you making the decision and you communicating that with him. And for many of you, it is at a distance. It's putting it in the mail. So it may not be snail mail. Maybe you're going to send an email. Maybe it's the same thing. Maybe you need to sign the divorce papers. Maybe he's waiting on you to make that choice. You to sign the legal paperwork to get this finally completely done. But that's what they're recommending that you do. Either side of the house, that's what, has, that's what they're recommending that has to be done to move forward. There has to be complete ending. That has to be communicated with each other. That okay, this is it, we're done. Also, for those of you that it requires any legalities, any signing of documentations, paperwork, get your attorneys, get everything signed, get it done, get it completed. That's what they're wanting, really wanting you to do. It's interesting when uh, they were telling me to do these readings, I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't have time for this. And they're like, well, okay, we're gonna help you clear your schedule so you have time for it. And sure enough, they did. It's amazing how they just make stuff happen. But when we allow them to, it's kind of beautiful. Let, allow Capricorn. But uh, so they cleared my schedule. And then they were telling me that I'm not going to be doing any weekly readings again until after Thanksgiving. And, and I was kind of surprised by that. And they said, well, no, because people, people are at a pivotal point where it is time that they must answer the call. They must finally take action on these signs, these synchronicities, these things that we've been trying to get them to do for months. Because so many thousands of people, granted this is your situation, but all the readings that I've been doing, everyone is stagnated in some area of their life. And there's just some action steps that need to be taken. And they're saying that this is the time, the divine timing, time has come for the actions to be taken. For people to be free from the stagnation, for people to be freed from things that aren't working, that are not serving them, that are not bringing them bliss, not bringing them joy. It's time to end all that so we can all begin a new paradigm. And Capricorns, they want you to have a new paradigm. They want you to have bliss. They want you to have happiness. Now to do that, you have to take the action steps. For most of you, it is communicating your feelings. It is communicating with this ex, this person that you're still tied to, that it is over. It is done. It is finished. For some of you, they actually have someone new for you. You already know who that person is. Some of you, it's also allowing yourself to communicate your feelings with yourself. Because you know, I was saying earlier, you know, oftentimes if we're in a relationship, we'll ignore red flags and we'll keep tuning that out because, okay, we, we need the financial assistance or we need the emotional support or I mean, for some it's a sexual intimate relationship. But whatever it is, we'll, we'll ignore those red flags. We ignore our emotions. We don't want to acknowledge those things. So for some of you, what they're recommending you do these next few weeks is to really acknowledge your feelings. Again, you know how they were talking about the T-chart earlier? Do a T-chart. What's working? What's not working? And you will see that this, this, is, this is done. This is done. It's well beyond done. That it's time to remember that you deserve something that brings you bliss. You deserve to have your dreams come true. You know, you've got eight. They're trying to get you on a destined path. 
Because again, this is a karmic cycle. This was simply a lesson to be learned so that you can move on to bigger, better things. And you want that. Allow them to get you there. You see this card? You've got this, this angel flying above her head. You've got this angel standing to her left. For some of you, there does need to be some forgiveness. You've got this, this white dove above. So for some of you, there does need to be some forgiveness. Some um, releasing. So some of you, there's been some really harsh judgments that you've had toward yourself. Some of you toward him that need to be released, forgiven, forgotten. Because when we forgive, forget, release, and cut those cords, we can fully move on. But for some of you, that needs to, to be done. But you've got this whole team. They're ready. They're on standby. Allow them to help you take flight. Now, the last card that you have as far as what's recommended for you, you do have financial constraints. Card number 13. And this is all about restrictions monetarily, money problems. So for some of you, money may be tight at this time because again you've been in the outskirts with him for some of you eight to twelve ish months so for some of you you were relying on his financial assistance he was helping you make ends meet and now he's not there to help you make ends meet and for some of you that's why you're thinking uh, they're saying for some of you you've actually thought about trying to to make it happen again trying to bringing the two of you back together but it's just because of fears of money. But you don't have anything to fear. They're cutting this person out of your life. They're cutting, they're freeing the two of you. They're ending this karmic cycle. Allow them to end it. You don't have any money problems to worry about. They're going to bring you in new. If you look, this is like a safe and it's got all these cobwebs, the walls falling down. It's kind of representative of this relationship you've had. It may have started 10, 15, 20 some years ago. Maybe it was great then, but it, it wasn't great for very long. But you, you both held on for, for different reasons. Many for money. But you see, there's really not much money in this safe. It's just not worth it, Capricorn. You've got two piddly coins in there. You've got all these cobwebs. You've got the walls falling down. This is, it's, it's like the tower. This is coming crashing down. It is coming crashing down. Don't allow it to crash down on your head because you're destined to move on. You're being divinely guided to move on. When we're being divine, and sometimes we do have a hard time because, you know, maybe we have had a connection with someone for years and then maybe we're just, you know, that's comfort for us. So we were like, well, yeah, I know they're loyal and they're faithful and they help me financially. I know I'm not really into it. I don't really want to be with them, but you know, it's kind of like my, my safety blanket. And everyone likes their little safety blanket. You'll see kids that will be dragging around their little blankies when they're like 12 years old and they're still sucking on the corner of it. They have long past the age where they need to put their blankie down because they're safe, they don't have anything to worry about. It is long past the time, Capricorn, for you to put your blankie down. You're amazing, you're gonna be just fine on your own. You don't need that. And you're saying for many of you, that's why you've held on. It, it's a comfort. But it's not really comfortable when everything's crashing around you and everything's falling down. You've got all these cobwebs, nothing's being maintained, nothing's being taken care of. It is coming down. And again, you know, if we've got something we're really comfortable with, we really don't want to let it go, even though we know that we're supposed to let it go. What will happen is the divine will just make it, make it end, make it, make it be over. And it happens in all areas of life. It just happens to be with you, with a romantic partner that you've been with for a very long time. And when something is not meant to be, come hell or high water, we can't stop it from ending. You know, this is not love related. Take me in the military. I've been in the military for 20 years. I've worked very hard to get to the point of being a state director of communications. Known in DC for the work that I do. Very good at what I do. Nationally known. I have people all over the country still calling me, asking for help and assistance. Worked very hard in my life for that. Now my family, they're like, you've been married to your job. And they're like, this is crazy. You've been married to your job. You need to be free of that. But I've loved it. I've loved every minute of it. 
Then I start going through the spiritual awakening stuff and God starts opening up these gifts, which I fought. I fought. I didn't want these things. Like, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to be ostracized from my family. There were times when I was going through an awakening, my parents wouldn't talk to me for days on end. It took me a very long time to share with my family such that I was going through through this, having this stuff awaken. Now, fast forward, now my family's very thankful and blessed, and this is, you know, God's working through me too, and has healed a number of family members of cancer and all types of stuff. It, it is a blessing. Now everyone sees it as a blessing. I see it as a blessing. Initially, I did not see it as a blessing. I did not want this. And initially they came in, and they told me uh, two and a half, three years ago that, that I was gonna be medically retired. I'm like, no, I'm not. I will not be medically retired. I have worked too hard for this. I am not letting this go. I will be damned if I am going to let this go because I've given everything of me to this for so long. I don't want to lose this. I love this. And they're like, no, no, it's going away. Like it or not, it's going away because we have something better for you. I'm like, no, 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 uh-uh. It's not. They're like, but it is. We don't win that battle, Capricorn. You're not going to win that battle. I didn't get to win that battle. Fast forward, here we are. I'm on the brink, probably going to be retired in November. No later than December. But now I'm happy. I'm glad. I'm excited about it. I've now had a few years of God working through me to be able to help the people and help them grow and heal. And it's a blessing. And I'm thankful that now I get to serve in this new way, this new capacity. Initially, it was kind of, kind of a little odd, kind of a little weird. I was really not wanting any part of it. But fast forward... I'm thankful. I'm so thankful. And my life is magical now. It's beautiful. It's blessed. I had to finally let go though. And I fought kicking and screaming. But if we are destined to move on and we are destined to have something end, that karmic cycle end, any amount of crying and throwing fits and holding on and dragging our feet is not going to stop it. And for those of you that have to let this person go, he is going. It is done. Because you're destined for something else. They are destined for something else. This is done. This is over. It's not going to stop. What you can do this month that they're recommending that you do is you gracefully allow it to go. You do your part to finally end it. Finally culminate this cycle so that you're, you're free to move forward. They want to move you forward. They want your dreams to come true. They really do, Capricorn. They love you. They haven't forgotten you. They have a beautiful plan in mind for you, but it's in a different pasture. With a new cowboy, it's not in this pasture. It's something new. It's something beautiful. It's something that's going to fulfill you. It is something that is going to happen because it's destined, it's faded. The cool thing about stuff that's destined or faded, you know, we can just kind of let go and let God because if it's destined to happen, it's going to happen. Now, granted, we get free will here on earth, but for those of you that are in this situation, this is destined to end. Free will or not, it, it's just been dragging out the inevitable. You've been dragging out your misery. If you look at it, they're saying for some of you in the past, you know, four or five, three, four years or so, you've been trying again to make it work. And, and, and every time it's a challenge. You know that something's not meant for you when every time there's this hiccup and this, you've had tons of delays. When there's tons of delays and hiccups and issues, it's not meant to be. And, and God and angels will only allow us to ignore that for so long when something's destined, when they just finally step in and uh-uh, no, done. The building's about to crumble down. What you can do, accept it, allow it, forgive, forget, forgive yourself. Sign the papers contact the attorneys for those of you that have some stuff that you have to do and for those of you that i'm sharing this message this is not a surprise so for those of you that are capricorns that are in this lovely relationship and things are blissful and happy these messages are not for you this is for the cappies out there that you know this is a toxic relationship and then toxic vicious back and forth cycle that you've been in for years you know that this is you you know that it is over allow it to be over they're encouraging you you have to allow it to be over this is not a safe haven for you any longer. This is not your comfy blanket anymore. It's crashing down. It's crumbling down. Allow it to crash. Allow it to end. Make the decision. 
complete this cycle, let it end. Now, for some of you that do have the, the financial concerns, and you know, sometimes we legitimately do, maybe, you know, we're on a champagne budget and without this financial assistance from our partner, we're gonna be down to the beer income. And that's okay. They are gonna turn your finances around because they are saying you don't have to worry about finances, they're going to help you. Now, what you need, may need to do in the meantime, use these next few weeks, put yourself together a budget. Put together a budget because they're saying for some of you there are areas that you can cut back on cut back on some frivolous expenses maybe you can cut back on your cable maybe you've got this 180 dollars cable bill per month well you can cut that back and just have wireless internet 50 60 bucks a month maybe instead of going to high-end restaurants for dinner six nights of the weeks six nights of the week you only go one night a week and then you cut your food down from 350 in restaurants down to 60 bucks. There are ways that you can cut back. There are ways that you can ex cut your expenditures. For some of you, you like really nice things, so maybe you, you just need to hold off on getting some new products for a little bit. But, but just cut back on that. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay, Capricorn. They're helping you. Allow them to help you. Okay, so go ahead and think of a question. We're gonna get this wrapped up. If there is a question that you have, Cappy, that has not been answered, think of what that is. We're gonna pull you an angel answer card real quick. So, okay. Meditation brings answers. I'm gonna pull you one more. Think of one more question that you have. Choose a new direction. Okay. I would say that I am sorry, but I am sorry. It's always hard to let things go. It doesn't matter what we're letting go. But this isn't a shock. If this were a shock, I would be very, very sorry for what you're going through, Cappies, but it's not a shock. So that's a good thing. But we are, humans are creatures of habit. So I'm sorry that you are at the point that you have been backed into making this change, but it, remember it is gonna be beautiful for you. It is going to bring blessings your way. It's gonna be worth it. If they're saying it is going to be worth it. Uh, some of you are so worried. Don't worry. Meditation brings answers. Trying to come up with an intellectual answer to your concerns hasn't been successful. That's because the solutions you seek can only be found by going within, through meditation or inner spiritual work. You may also gather insights from your nighttime dreams as your subconscious creates solutions for you that are not available to your waking mind. Okay, choose a new direction. Oh, I've got these mosquito bites. Bracelet keeps rubbing on them. Okay. The time has come to choose a new direction for your life. The circumstances that you find yourself living in may seem unfulfilling or perhaps your heart is full of discontent. You know that there is something more out in the world for you and you've been procrastinating following the guidance of your angels. Make a conscious choice to be the person you are meant to be. Create an action plan for yourself that leads you in the direction of your divine life purpose. Begin taking steps immediately toward a happier future. That's spot on, Cappies. You got some beautiful stuff coming, so. I do wish all of you an amazing month filled with a lot of love, joy, and blessings for those of you that are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. I hope that you have a safe time with your family and friends. Enjoy your time together. For those of you that are not celebrating, go on ahead and celebrate it because you've got a lot of things, a lot of things to be thankful for coming in. So have a good one. I love you all very much, and I will talk to you after Thanksgiving.